Hey everyone, welcome to our first Valentine's Day nail art collaboration featuring me, Sarah, from Sarah's Nail Secrets, and me, Talia, from Talia's Nail Tales. Our Christmas series was so much fun, we wanted to try another holiday as well. We'll be spacing the series out a little different, so it'll last until Valentine's Day. So let's get started. Okay, so today's theme was anti-Valentine's Day, but I decided to kind of go with a heartbreak theme. So my, my set kind of has a story. The design is inspired by someone who's upset and crying, and so the rose has teardrops on it, and the blue nails represent like teary blue eyes. So that's where I was going with this set. I like to kind of come up with an idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing, so that's what I did for this design. And I did this on my own hands. So I started by already applying clear tips and a base, and now I'm just coming in to do a heart. So this is gonna be a not polished heart. So I'm gonna be using Glitter Bells Snowdrops White, and the brush I'm using is my Glitter Bells number 12 brush. So you start by applying your white, and I'm just doing one side of the heart first. So I'm just gonna pat that into place and just use my brush to create the heart. The first little bit I'm putting down now is just the general shape of the heart and then I'm going to build it up so that when I apply my cover pink over it that um, that the heart will be thick enough that when I file through I won't need to encapsulate the nail. So now that I have my base down for that heart, I'm just going to be applying more acrylic in order to build it up and make it so that I can file through and show the heart when I'm finished. After I've got the heart down and in place, I'm just going to let that dry. So moving on, I'm going to use Liquid Silver from Glitter Bells. I absolutely love this Liquid Silver, it's so beautiful. So you, I just apply it near the cuticle area and then I'm just going to drag this down the nail. The Liquid Silver and the Liquid Gold from Glitter Bells is super pigmented so you get away with using just a little bit and I can just drag it down the nail and it does full coverage so it's really nice. I accidentally pulled off a bunch of the color in one spot, so I'm just going to apply a little bit more right there. So then I'm coming in with the Nail Team Unicorn Flakes in the color Champagne. I love these so much, and I've had this pot for a while, a little goes a long way. So I'm just picking up a clear bead of acrylic and then dipping it into that pot and picking up some of those Unicorn Flakes, and I'm just wiping them over top of the liquid silver. So I did that on all the three other nails, and this is how they look so far. So now that my heart's dry, I'm just coming in and filing the little corners here. This heart doesn't actually need to be perfect because I will be covering it with spider gel for the most part. So I'm going to come in and cover up the heart with Glitter Bell's Pink Opal Shimmer. This is such a beautiful cover pink. This is a core powder so you don't need to encapsulate it. And it's okay if you overlap your heart because you're just going to file it through anyway and then reveal the heart, but you guys will see that in a bit. So I'm just working this near the cuticle area. And then I'm just going to drag it down the side of the heart. This is going to be really thick for a while, but it'll be okay because when you finish file, it'll be nice and thin, just like it's supposed to be. I'm also applying the pink opal shimmer on my ring finger because I'm going to be doing a flower with some crystals on it. So I just wanted this nail to be nice and plain and I absolutely love the pink opal shimmer so I needed more of it.
after I've applied all my colors, I'm gonna come and encapsulate some of these nails. So um, when doing nails this long, I find that sometimes I neglect my tip at the very, very tip here. So I'm making sure to apply the clear acrylic there first, and then I'm gonna go and finish encapsulating the nail and build an apex, just so that I don't accidentally break that tip off later on. And now I'm coming in and applying a bigger bead near the cuticle area, and this is just to encapsulate that glitter, and I'll still need to build up an apex. So with nails this long, you probably won't be able to get away with doing a one ball method, but it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're applying your acrylic and encapsulating the whole nail. So here's how the nails look after they've been encapsulated and I'm not going to show you guys too much finished filing but I did want to show you me revealing the heart. So I'm coming in with a fine safety bit here and I'm just going over that heart carefully. Don't want to file too much into the nail just trying to reveal the heart. And you want to keep your apex and you want to keep all the strength in the nail as well. I just find this part fun because it's really fun to see the, the not polished design just come right out. If you ever do do this and you do find that the nail is too thin after, you can still encapsulate the nail after finish filing this. But I try to apply it so that I don't have to do that. After debulking and revealing the heart, I'm just going to go over my sidewalls and over top of the nail to try to even it out and thin it out and finish my finish filing. After that, you're just going to want to wipe off all the extra dust and cleanse the nails. Okay, so for making the rose, I did this ahead of time. So here I'm using Glitterbell's Snowdrops White and the Glitterbell's number four art brush. And I'm just creating petals and you're just gonna roll up the petals and stuff. So I didn't wanna make this video too long. So I'm just gonna do a quick version here. So here I just let that dry a little bit, but you still wanna be able to move it. And then I fold that little center piece up and I glued it down on a small base. Then I create a bunch of small petals that are gonna wrap around that base. So make sure that you're wearing gloves. I've seen a lot of people doing this in videos and they don't wear gloves and you really just do not wanna be touching wet acrylic and monomer with your bare hands. When I pick up the petal here, the one side that I wrap around is still wet. So here you can see me doing that again and I'm wrapping the wet side around and it will stick to that base there. So you're just gonna wrap and overlap these um, I did find this a little hard to do when I first learned this technique. So a tip and trick I learned was to make sure it's a little bit thicker than you might assume because the thinner it is, the harder it is to sort of wrap it around and get it to work the way you want. And then I just keep repeating that process until my rose is the size that I want it to be. After that, I let that completely dry, and then before putting it on the nail, I'm just filing the back of it to make it a little bit flatter and easier to stick down. To glue that down, I'm using my Kara Sky base. I'm just dropping a big blob of that base on the nail. It's like a resin glue, and then I just push the rose into that and let that dry. So now I'm gonna be applying crystals. So I get all my crystals from Crystal Princess, and I do have a discount code. It's Sarah Tent, and you'll get 10% off. And I'm just using the white opal and these sapphire blue ones. And I'm just kind of creating a side, you know, swoopy crystal look to it and adding some beads. I was originally gonna do blue drops to make it look like tears coming out from the bottom of the rose, but then I really like these crystals and decided to do a crystal design instead. The blue jelly polish I'm using is called Metallic Number no. Two from Egoista. And I'm just applying this over all the silver nails. Mm -hmm. 
So here's how they're looking so far. So before adding spider gel, I'm gonna top coat these. So I'm coming in with my Glitter Bells No Wipe Top Coat and I'm just top coating all the nails. So I'm gonna top coating the heart nail and I'm gonna go over top of those blue metallic nails as well. And you're gonna want to apply it near your crystals and you can push it near the crystals, but don't get it on top of your crystals, but you can get it on top of the little beads. After giving the top coat a full cure, I'm coming in to do the droplets on the rose. So I did try this before filming and I found that the jelly polish was too runny to do that on its own. So I went over the rose with some hard gel first and then gave that a cure. And then I went over the hard gel droplets with the blue jelly. So I gave that a full cure and now I'm coming in to do the spider gel. So I got this spider gel in Vegas from a store called Direct Beauty Supply. And then I'm just taking a dotting tool and just going back and forth over top of that heart, kind of just a crisscross. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It looks cool no matter what. I love the spider gel. So I'm just going to go back and forth until I am happy with the way that turned out. And then I'm going to give that a full cure. So the spider gel seems to cure tack free. So you can just give that a cure, pop it out of the lamp. And here is the finished design. So hope you guys liked my heartbreak idea. I thought I'd do something a little bit different. And um, I really enjoy this set. I actually think they turned out a lot prettier than I had anticipated. So I really like them. And I decided to also do my right hand. And I did my right hand with just some crystals and didn't make them match because I find it way too difficult to do my own hand. So here's my right hand. So don't forget to check out what Talia did. Hers are this really cool black and red anti-Valentine's Day, super anti-Valentine's Day set. So I'm really excited to see how she did those. So make sure you check her out and subscribe. So we have two more tutorials coming in a few days. So make sure to check back for that. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.